Welcome to a video about estimating addition and subtraction problems using whole numbers. The goal is to estimate sums and differences of whole numbers by rounding. So let's start off by reviewing how we round whole numbers. The first thing we want to do is identify the round off digit. Then if the digit to the right of the round off digit is less than five, we do not change the round off place digit. If it's five or more, we increase the round off place digit by one. And the last step is to replace all digits to the right of the round off place digit with zeros. For example, we want to round both of these numbers to the hundreds. So we'll first identify the hundreds place value, which is the seven for both numbers. The digit to the right is what I call the decision maker, which tells us whether we round up or round down. So for 3,739, if we round this to the hundreds, this three tells us to round down which means we do not change the seven and then replace the digits to the right with zero. So this would round to 3,700. However, on the second example, the digit to the right is a six, which means round up. So we change this seven to an eight and then the digits to the right will be zeros. So this would round to 3,800. Let's go ahead and apply this technique to adding whole numbers. Here we want to estimate the sum by rounding to the tens. So we'll round each of these whole numbers to the tens. We'll first identify the tens place value. The digit on the right tells us whether to round up or round down. So for 348, this eight tells us to round up. So this rounds to 350. Plus, and for 73, this three tells us to round down. So this would round to 70. So to estimate this sum, we could add the rounded numbers instead, which is typically easier. The ones column would be zero. The tens column would be 12. So we write down two and carry one. One plus three would give us four. So an estimate for the original sum would be 420. This type of estimation is used quite a bit in the real world. For example, when you go to the grocery store and you buy a bunch of items, we often round to the nearest dollar or even $10 to determine what our approximate cost will be when we go to the checkout counter. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. Here we want to estimate the difference by rounding to the thousands. So this four is in the thousands and so is the six. The digits to the right will tell us to round up or round down. So 14,389, this three tells us to round down. So this would round to 14,000. And 6,846, this eight tells us to round up, so this would round to 7,000. Well, 14,000 minus 7,000 would be 7,000, which would be an estimation for this difference. On this example, we want to estimate the sum by rounding to the nearest 10,000s. We'll first identify the round off place value. That would be this zero and this eight. The digit to the right is our decision maker, which tells us to round up or round down. This four tells us to round down, so we don't change the zero, and everything to the right is replaced with zero. So this rounds to seven million. The six tells us to round up, so this would round to 90,000. Notice most of these columns are zeros. Here we have a nine, a zero, and a seven. So the estimation for this sum when rounding to the 10 thousands is 7,090,000. Let's take a look at one more. Now we're back to estimating a difference, and here we'll round to the thousands. The nine is in the thousands, and the three is in the thousands. This four here tells us to round down. This eight here tells us to round up. So this will round to 89,000. This will round to 24,000. And we're finding the difference. So again, the first three columns are zeros. Here we have nine minus four, that's five. And eight minus two would be six. Our estimation is 65,000. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching.